Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video I want to talk about how to use your leftover paint. Over the months I collect uh, a lot of these leftover paint and I decided to see if I can use those paint and uh, do a painting with it. In preparation for that, um, I actually did a, I used a few uh, paper bags and I set them up and I did a photo shoot uh, with those and then I chose one um, just to use that as uh, the reference photo for uh, for this painting. In addition to that, I also plan to uh, shoot this video in real time. So I will be narrating and as I paint. So this video is going to be a bit lengthy and I am most likely going to speed up the last part because I feel like it's just too long. So this is the um, value study I did for, uh, in preparation for the painting. And you could clearly see your, uh, the, the things I like to, to do is to keep it uh, three values. We have the, um, the light tone, the mid tone, and the dark tone. And... Um, So, and I have a drawing I did over here, um, ready to uh, get started. And this is something that I, I want to talk about uh, before I start. And this is a, uh, some leftover paint that I use um, for the past few months. And um, so the idea is to use a majority of the color using these leftover paint. And because they, over the months, I just kind of uh, squeeze out whatever leftover paint and just to see if I could use the same, um, uh, this part of color to do a painting. And there will be some color that I'm going to use, for example, the brightest color for this painting. And I might add some red and orange from here just to kind of bring out that intense color. And then um, and if I want a little bit cooler, I could use the other color, the, the, the blue over here, to kind of um, cool it down a little bit if I want some warmer color. So I would use these to kind of shift the temperature up and down. And then for, for the lighter color, I would just simply try to also uh, um, just dilute it with, with, with water. And then for the darker side, I can, I'm going to try to not use, um, if I can get away with not adding darker color, I can just use, uh, I, I'll do uh, my best to use just this puddle of color and see if we can, if we can get anything uh, from this. And hopefully this is actually, uh, even though this is kind of um, gray, kind of a mud color, but uh, even with the limited palette, um, the color should not be muddy and it should be and then the the key is also the um it's the value structure that is actually going to drive everything and um and you'll find out that most of the time uh to you do not need to get the accurate color meaning uh, the color does not have to be a perfect match, perfectly matched to the reference photo. It would still look okay. And in fact, I'm going to try to really push the warm and the cool a little bit just to see uh, color variations. Okay. All right, let's get started. So to start off, um, I will use this uh, just to spray these um, dry up colors and I don't want to spray too much water I just want to spray enough so that way it just kind of activate the color and then these are the color I also want to um, uh, just give it a cup of spray and so this will actually kind of um, wake up the color and so that way it's um, easy to work with Um, so right now, if, uh, if you look at the reference photo or the value study, I'm going to focus, concentrate mostly on the light area right here, right here. The, this is the most intense light color. So I'm going to, I could actually start out with this color 
um, and then work my way down here and then so this would be the warmest here and this is the uh, the lightest and then but this is the coolest here so um, I'm going to see what I can get and okay so now I'm gonna I get because this is the most intense color I'm I'm gonna try to um, this is as far as I'm gonna go with this color <clears throat> kind of has that yellow um, and I wouldn't go any um, so now I'm gonna start and just a little bit of that light color of the top and then um, as I walk my way down I'm gonna um, start getting the muted color <clears throat> So mostly using this puddle and and just right now I'm just simply just lighten the color but then it still has a little bit of that orange color but not really strong. So just fill that in. Um, I'm going to move further down here and this is the area where it has mostly like cooler color assuming that the lights a little bit cooler. So let's see what I can get. So these both colors are kind of in that area not too light i mean not too um not too warm because uh, i want the bottom to be a lot cooler so i'm using these kind of um cooler color and Again, this is the light, this is the light um, value that I'm painting right now. Get a bigger brush. So I, as I'm getting into that pot of color, I could see that the, um, value is getting darker and this is slightly warmer because I'm getting ready to um and can lighten that soften that a little bit <clears throat> so this is my um my light tone and I'm gonna start out um, once that dries a little bit. I'm gonna start uh, working on the 
mid-tone. So the mid-tone is really just uh, this area right here and it's slightly darker than uh, this air, the, the, the light tone that I just put down, but it's somewhat um, saturated, especially like, like right around here and kind of saturated over here. So I'm going to um, make sure there is a difference between this is... Uh, uh, this area is um, more intense, and then this is slightly less intense, but the values are similar. So as I'm digging into this, I realize, oh, this is actually um, a lot um, has a lot more um, of a cooler. But um, instead of using it on this side, I, I might use it on this side. So for this side. Um, I'm going to see what I can do. Oh, as I'm going in here, you can see that it's getting warmer. So maybe I'll just start out with that and warm it up a little. Again, I'm still using mostly in this part of color. I just use this to warm it up a little. And let's see what we can get. Okay. So as it goes further uh, down, it gets it the color actually gets slightly lighter and less saturated. So I'm gonna continue with that. And gonna get it right here because I know this area it's slightly cooler so and this way it's gonna add a lot of color variations and also it gets lighter as well and so now I'm going to use this puddle and then slightly keep it cooler than this part right here. So mainly using this puddle uh, next to it. Then gets slightly gets darker, and you'll notice that um, the color it's not it doesn't match a hundred percent, but so far it's um, I think it's because it's got a lot of subtle um, variations. It makes it much more interesting. And I purposely um, leave that uh, because I don't want that to the color to touch. <clears throat> and then, when it come when it comes closer to the bottom, this area also gets slightly darker and more 
intense so i am actually gonna make that one more like that that's the value that i'm looking for and this is my first block and and now i'm gonna get it slightly darker and I can even make it more intense but like I said the whole most intense color is going to be right around here so I don't want to fight with that okay and I might just extend this part a little bit more, more like that. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to use this part, um, work on right here because it's got similar values right around here and the reason these are more this area is more intense is because it's actually the um, you can see that the paper is not exactly um, opaque it's the light travels through it so you could see that translucency of the the paper bag and that's what makes those um, color interesting to look at and gonna keep that part right there again this is my mid-tone so now I'm on the other side. Now I'm going to make sure that this side, um, it's cooler than what's over here. Because if, if you look at the comparison, this is very intense. And so I could actually keep this part um, much more cooler. And as it goes further up, it gets darker. And there are some subtle changes in the color. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just focus on the focus on the, um, the my midtone. And the subtleties, I can go back in and adjust that later. And okay, now. The next thing I'm going to do is um, work on the background. So I want the, the background to be darker up there. And then at, as it comes down, it gets warmer as it it's cool up here and warmer down here. So I'm going to get a big brush and get that in there. And like I said before, I want—I don't know what color that's going to be. I'm going to try not to add too much water. Just um, see what I can come up with. It looks like um, it's pretty cool up there. So I just have to darken it slightly with the paint gray. I don't want to add too much water. And so these are some of the, the surprises that... Um, 
add a little bit of conacodone. I mean, the, um, uh, what is that called? I can't even remember. Um, uh, Dachshund purple. So let's get, st um, get this going. And you can see that there is some color variations in that, which I find it very exciting because you have cl cooler blue up there and and then you you start moving as you come down like there's like um a much much uh a different colors and kind of goes and then on this side I'm going to shift this thing, maybe make it slightly. Warmer. So this is. Um, how um, you can start getting your color they look like they're coming from the same family they 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 look like they they are relating to each other they they have something in common and if you look at the reference i mean it's not an exact um match but uh but we we could still see that um we don't i don't feel like it um um the the color is um uh there's i don't it doesn't feel like it's a muddy color painting it's just um it's a limited palette uh but it's not definitely not muddy in terms of like dirty color and i don't i don't like i don't believe that um there is such thing as dirty color i think it's just a color relationships and if you just um get your your color relation i mean if you get your value relationship correct it's actually um not that difficult okay so let me get this dark right there um <clears throat> And here, the color is very intense here, so I'm, I'm going to try to push that color even more. Again, I'm using still mainly this puddle, and, and these are more pure colors, so I'm kind of go back to that. And let's see, I can get away with that. And then the super, super dark color. Because that's the way the light just, these crumble uh, paper bag that the light couldn't travel through those. Um, so it kind of makes that really dark um, color. And there's some subtleties in there. I'll address that later. Let's see. So I'm getting pretty close to getting my block ins done. <clears throat> and I want to uh, feel like this part, uh, I didn't put a, a wash to this. So I'm going to get a, a light wash from here just really light so this will get rid of that pure white and it'll make everything um, talking to each other it'll make this um, um, yeah make, make 
the this part the most intense color and let's see <clears throat> so I decided to I feel like this area needs to be slightly darker so I'm gonna uh, use this puddle of color maybe like over here um, just a light um, a light wash to kind of slight make it darker <clears throat> again um, the colors are really harmonious they kind of they talk to each other they because they are all covering from this whole uh, puddle. Mm. Okay. Let's dry this and then we'll go from there. <clears throat> so now with um, the first blocking is done, so <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to do is uh, get the darkest, um, smaller shapes, uh, break the, the darkest uh, shapes, all the, um, to add some variations in there. So at this point, I'm going to try to stick to um, these darker color because uh, apparently the, this part of color, there's not enough uh, to get the darkest dark so I'm gonna push that a little bit more and really push the color to get that super super dark especially like right around here this is that darker and there's a lot of um, like warm and cool in there as well so <clears throat> and if it is if, if I need to I might have to lift out some of the to get the um, to get the subtleties within those shapes and also I'd like to uh, put a slight uh, darker and warmer wash um, here so there's a separation between this plane and this plane as well. And I got to continue to use, um, mix this puddle and then just kind of use. like to keep that slightly lighter that's those are the things that makes the paper bag looks uh, f there's a lot of Chris there's a lot of wrinkles or what do you call those these are the subtleties in there, the smaller shapes. <clears throat> Again, because uh, they're part of that same family, so it's I don't even need to mix too much. I just have to look into um, breaking those into smaller shapes. And these are part of this similar family that's why like it's it it looks like looks pretty harmonious and I might put <clears throat> a slightly 
bit warmer wash. I can use this area right here. So again, the color is, uh, it's not an exact match, match but um, the, the, the idea is to, to have that limited palette, and it's still going to work, uh, even though with um, these limited palettes. <clears throat> And these are the strongest color you can find. And Even though these colors are very limited, but they they don't like I said they don't look um, they don't look like they have one color, but there's a lot of subtle there's a lot of subtle difference in the. Um, in the um, <clears throat> uh, the temperature shift, and also there is that um, there is that um, change in the saturation as well. So if I can bring maybe this part. <clears throat> further up as it goes further up higher you have like a even more intense color shifting Then I'm gonna maybe lighten that. See if and then there. <clears throat> These are the smaller shapes. That shape right there. Then I have some so you can beginning to see the subtleties between these different plane.
then I have some really super dark to get rid of those kind of let them get lost into the background don't need to define them too much okay now need to get that shadow all right so here is the last part and I just sped this uh, part up because it's just too long and uh, for the most part uh, really it's just um, I'm trying to uh, break up the smaller shapes uh, within that big shapes and just um, adding small details and uh, mostly uh, fine-tune the edges and correct any necessary drawings and uh, to just make everything, uh, just tighten things up a little. So this is, uh, seem like it's a, um, uh, it's a very lengthy process and this is the process that I, I just feel like it's way too long and and I, I think it's um, also very boring just to go through that and even um, for myself and this uh, process actually take I would say another hour hour and a half so I sped this uh, process up uh, this section about um, maybe like three thousand uh two thousand percent so it was a lot quicker so here's the end result um as you can see the the color um is a little bit darker i have lightened up especially the top where the paper bag is the i could see i wanted to uh, get the feeling of the light coming through and and also toward the bottom it's um, a lot more contrasty and the uh, the shapes are a lot, and the shapes are a lot more um, uh, contrasty, and also the temperature. Uh, it's actually a lot cooler compared to the the center of interest. That's it for this video. If you like this video and the contents on this channel, please like, subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.